episode of Agora through Museo Macro. My name is Lexi Smith, and I'm very excited to be the first person who gets to share with you guys um, a folder that I have on my laptop. This is my first live stream and my first screen share. So I feel very um, vulnerable, which is relevant because I'm going to show you guys this collection of over 240 images of therapists and psychologists that I've been collecting. I have been collecting them for, I guess I started a couple months ago. So it's all been during COVID. Um, and I'm going to run through each of them individually. Um, the way that I got to this collection is that like many in this moment, I was looking for a therapist. I had put it off for about 15 years and um, you know, COVID has been a very good instigator for finally uh, tackling mental health for many of us. So I'm really curious to how many other people have been searching the internet for um, for a person who could, you know, guide them forward through to a better future. And that's essentially what a therapist is at best, I would say. Um, and I realized when I was looking at all of these images, when I was trying to like find that like very kind of important person in a sea of strangers, I was coming across a kind of pattern in the imagery that people were using to display themselves to me, um, to me and to, you know, thousands upon thousands of other strangers. And I realized the complexity of emotions that had to be displayed um, in order for them to get me to trust them. You know, all of the things that were trying to be conveyed to tell me that I would be safe. Um, and, you know, it's a very conflicting and complex um, collection of emotions. It has to be, there's an element of professionalism. There's comfort, empathy, security. Um, you know, there's a really strange consistency of cleanliness in these images. But really, it's like everyone just looks very nice. Um, that's what I've, one of the things I've considered to be an overarching theme. But I'm going to run through all of these, and I want all of you to kind of immerse yourself in them, almost like a meditation, and really see the way you react to each of them, see the different things that the images make you feel, and keep a couple things in mind which have um, shown themselves to me over time, which is that, through these images, I should say, which is that we all need different things from them, from the people that we look to for assistance. You know, help is a very general term. And um, what we're looking for when we're looking for help differs depending on who we are and all the experiences that we've had. But all of these people are trying to, um, you know, match with all of our potential needs. So there is like a really interesting, I've found a very interesting kind of flattening to the images in order for them to encompass all of those needs and wants and desires. Um, I want you guys to consider whether or not you see in these people an ideal guide or a version of your ideal self. It's something that I keep thinking about when I look at them. Like, am I looking, am I looking for someone who seems like something I can sort of um, aspire to a kind of peace or is it someone who looks apart enough from me that they would be able to kind of guide me there almost objectively. Um, I also think a lot about how a picture of a stranger can make me feel relaxed. Like what are the things that they're doing um, in order to make someone who they have absolutely no relationship to feel relaxed. Um, and then I also think a lot about how we're moving deeper and deeper into a virtual world, a virtual quote unquote community, global community, you know, the word community and the word empathy are both used a lot. 
um, especially as we're being further siloed and isolated um, because of COVID. And so are we getting better at displaying empathy virtually and worse at having it in real life? Um, or does it help us have it in real life? Um, I don't really know. So I'm going to get started. All of these people to me, I should say, I love, I love these photos and I like, I've come to love these people. They imply like a real potential for me. Um, like the potential for a simple, beautiful life. And I do hope that that kind of comes through to all of you. Um, I want to, I want to know if they sort of serve as a palliative in, in total when you view them all for, I mean, it might take like seven or so minutes for me to run through all of them and kind of what it's doing to your state as, uh, as we go. So I'm going to get started and I'm going to try and not make any commentary as I go, which will be hard, but, um, I'll save it for the end. Okay.
Okay, so that's the bulk of them. Um, and I haven't actually ever run through all of them that way. Um, and I really love that a number of consistent traits really show themselves. Um, I'm also feeling like a mix of kind of cynical anxiety by seeing so many smiling, supposedly genuine smiling faces, and also um, a little bit of a yearning for such a utopian ideal. And I think that's kind of, for me, one of the things that really became clear with this collection was that kind of um, tension where I'm both sort of incredulous about the potential for Let's see, I'll find a really smiley one. I mean, even here, like that kind of just joy on a regular basis. Um, for me, has never been, oh, here, like this is a good one. That's never really, I've never really smiled that way. Um, but it seems nice. And, you know, so there's like this push and pull between do I go to these people to, trust that they can bring me to that place or do I inherently distrust them because there's no way it's happening. Um, you know, and there's also that other tension of, am I looking at a picture that's about them or am I looking at a picture that's about me? And um, I think that's kind of what happens when we're looking at images online in general is that images about other people become about ourselves. You know, so through this process, these are all subjects of photographs. But I mean, this one's one of my favorites. I mean, she's amazing. Like the tongue between the teeth. It's just like that to me, I'm, I'm not sure if that's manufactured joy. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be telling me about the potential of my life. Um, but there's, you know, she's looking at me in this photo, I'm supposed to believe. And so we become the subjects of these subjects, which is what happens when we go to therapy. We become their subjects. We also become their clients. So something that continually occurs to me when I'm looking at these images is that these are people who are selling a service and they're trying to get me to buy their service. And their services are expensive for the most part. Um, I started going to therapy about a month and a half ago. My therapist is in this collection and um, I haven't really been as concerned about money 
as I am now for a long time because it's expensive to go to therapy. And all of these images of kind of extreme empathy and, um, you know, peace almost are sort of skirting around to me the acknowledgement that we're going to, we're, we're going to have to pay them a lot of money to be able to attain it. Um, here's one of my favorites. I just want to bring this out. Like there's, a, there are a lot of elements to this that sort of touch to some of the consistent traits that I see, which are, you know, this m melding of professionalism and um, personal affect. There's a contentedness, there's a peacefulness. He's looking deep into my soul um, and he's not too happy. You know, there's, there's, he's content, which I think is what we're supposed to strive for because happiness and joy come maybe in flashes and content is the sort of stream that we want to run through the background of our lives. And um, to, to me, this sort of, this look is one that could be maintained for longer. There's a real sense of, as I said earlier, cleanliness to it. Um, you know, some of these images that are a little bit more high contrast, Sorry about the train in the background, if you guys can hear that. They're more high contrast. Sometimes there's even like sweat involved. Um, I actually like those better, but they are rare. I'm looking, this one for me is great. He's like at a bar um, and he just looks like he like plays on the town softball team. And for me, you know, one of the things that I've realized is I'm reacting to certain things that I really need to feel safe. And he apparently, I guess, speaks to me as someone who could, you know, offer me insight, but like gently push me towards a better future, like as if we were sitting at a bar together, um, you know, and we all need different things. And so these people are all trying to appeal to that very, very diverse set of needs in their invisible and huge audience, um, which is impossible to contain within one image. Um, there's also this smaller collection. This is like a piece of it that I'm exploring, but I'm not totally sold on yet. These are all psychiatrists. So these people are all medical doctors. Um, they have MDs. Psychologists have PhDs generally, not exactly an expert on the educational system behind this, but these people can prescribe drugs. So there's definitely a bit of a different vibe amongst some of them, not all, but I do think it's worth noting. We've got, like she could be a psychologist to me. Definitely a psychiatrist. Could go either way. Lots of glasses you may have picked up on. This guy is definitely a psychiatrist, not making eye contact. I just have to trust him. He's not doing the work to get me to trust him. I don't know if I trust him. Him, I do not trust. But I like that he has the attitude that says that I don't even have to. Love him. Lab coat, no lab coats in the psychologist photos. Okay, so this is another element that I was noticing um, degrees in the background. So part of what we have to keep in mind when we're talking about these people who are essentially putting up a stock image is that it has to be compelling because we're, they're asking us to pay for it. So you do see a lot of these degrees in the background which I, um, you know, can only imagine are there to help us feel better about shelling out money to talk about ourselves for 50 minutes at a time. Um, and I'm curious if, like, what kind of subconscious effect that does have on our choices as far as who we end up getting into a room with. Um, so that is all of them. And, you know, I, I want to say again, that I, I think this collection can 
turn all of these people into caricatures. Um, at the same time, and it's not really the intention at all. I'm interested in that effect, the, the effect that it has to do that. But I do think it's worth noting that the way that we always present ourselves online is towards a targeted audience. Um, you know, it lacks the nuance and diversity of real human experience. So it becomes one sided, you know, like I look at, well, I love him, so I'll bring him up. But um, I look at this image and it's not about him. It's about me, which is for me at least what happens often when I'm looking at it, looking at images of other people online that they present of themselves. You know, so I see, <clears throat> I see someone doing something amazing. Um, they're showing it to me in an image on the internet, and I, you know, perhaps have a moment of, um, you know, inspiration that's caused by it. But I also end up feeling bad about myself. I think about my own shortcomings. So the image isn't a, isn't me, but it becomes about me. And, and uh, I like even this person becomes about me when I'm looking at him in the context of how can how does my potential salvation exist within that face, which maybe it does because look at his smile. But I would also say that, you know, the point is that I really glean nothing from these images. There's no real truth to them. I don't know what would happen um, if I was to get into a room with them. And I think that that's a really important thing to consider when we think about how um, sort of reductive the images we put of ourselves on the internet are. Um, oh, and lastly, I'm taking a lot of time, but I wanna show you this image, which is a picture of me that my friend Georgia took. And I felt like it was, if I was going to have a psychologist bio photo, that's what it would be. Of all of the images of me, I think that this fits the uh, the um, description, the the metrics of psychologist bio photos, the best of all of them. Um, so I think I'm running over time and I should go, but I thank you all so much for staying with me through this. It's a collection of the most inoffensive images I've seen on the internet in forever. Um, and I think that there's something really wonderful about just spending time within them and that if they're understood as kind of an invitation and not the party itself, that they can be helpful, which is, you know, something we need right now. So thank you guys so much. Thank you, Museo Macro. They'll be doing more of these. I can't wait to watch them. Thank you.